If I had uh, three words to describe Malibu, uh, at least as I've known it, oh my God, Malibu. <laughs> I've lived in Malibu since 1961. I saw Malibu for the first time in 1943. When my ship put into Port Wanimi for repairs, I, I had been uh, aboard ship for about a year. Uh, the ship's uh, jeep was parked on the dock, so I grabbed hold of the uh, captain's yeoman and said, give me the keys. And he said, sir, I have to get permission from the captain. I said, to hell with the captain, give me the goddamn keys. So I took the keys and drove off. I stopped at the gate, uh, Point one name, and I said, where are the broads? In those days, broad was a, a nice word, not a bad word now. <laughs> He said, well, I tell you, you go to Malibu, the guide said, uh, you'll pr probably find some broads there. So I drove down to Malibu Colony. As I was driving, I thought, what a beautiful place this is. I'm gonna live here. So <laughs> I headed back to the ship uh, and I got back aboard and the guy said, uh, what'd you do, Cooper? I said, there ain't any broads in Malibu. Anyway, that, uh, that stuck in my mind uh, at the time. I decided that this is the place I'm going to live and build a house someday if I ever get back, if I ever get back alive. At that time, after having been in four or five battles, my chances of, re of returning, I thought, were pretty slim at the time. But I, I did come back, and uh, Alberta, my late wife, and I looked around all over the place and finally we decided uh, that Malibu was going to be our home, and it was. She was a PhD candidate at the University of Michigan, and I was a part-time lecturer at the University of Michigan. Anyway, Alberta decided she would uh, marry me, and never understood why. <laughs> I proposed to her by phone, and she said, well, I better think about this. She was pretty smart. <laughs> We finally settled down in Malibu. It was a good price for a house. I spent a, a lot of money, $30,000 uh, for the house we now live in. Uh, <laughs> and I figured, well, uh, I couldn't get a, as good a house as this or anywhere else. Here's some, uh, here, blackberries, right off the vine. And this is where we raised our family. All of our kids went to school here, all five. At this time, I was working uh, uh, 40 hours plus a week uh, on Malibu Township Council or in city business, but I wanted to take the time, uh, uh, even though it uh, deprived me of making, uh, earning a living for family, I, I wanted to be goddamn sure that uh, Malibu became the community, remained the community that Alberta and I had wanted to live in. Joining us now is this gentleman, Leon Cooper, an author and retired naval officer whose personal story set the wheels in motion to begin the search for Marines on the island of Tarawa. Also with us, filmmaker Stephen Barber, his first documentary, Return to Tarawa, told Leon Cooper's life story. It ran on Discovery's military channel, Until They Are Home, is the follow-up. Mr. Cooper, it's an honor for all of us to have you here for everything you've done. Uh, you began this mission two years ago when you went back to Tarawa. Tell us about what happened when you got there and what it, what, what it put in motion. My reason for going was to uh, see what I could do about removing the garbage from Red Beach where I had seen scores of my countrymen uh, fall under heavy Japanese gunfire. You found more than just garbage was the issue. I was really shocked and 
frankly angered when I learned that perhaps hundreds of Americans still lie where they fell uh, in a battle that took place almost 70 years ago in unmarked graves. And we were looking at you and your return to the beach there, Red Beach. Mr. Cooper, they found two, the remains of two U.S. servicemen not enough for you. No, there are hundreds there. What do you want to have happen? And this goes out to both of you. I know I think Mr. Cooper's a little more angry about this than you are, Stephen, but, but I think both of you want another trip. That's an understatement of my <laughs> anger. Uh, All right. Uh, I might uh, point out, uh, Jeff, that uh, a letter I received uh, yesterday, in fact, is one of hundreds of letters that I received that says it all. The letter says, in part, my uncle died in the bloody battle of Tarawa on November 20, 1943. The letter that he received the day uh, before he died, he said, I'll be home for Christmas. Of course, he never returned, and indeed his body was never found. One of hundreds of bodies who still lie there uh, in unmarked graves. Everybody with any sense knows goddamn well with the modern forensic techniques we have, we could identify who these people are. And not to put a goddamn statement on the guy's grave, we don't know who the hell you are. That's an insult. Before we leave, I, I want very much to have records proving that uh, there is activity leading to the repatriation of at least some of the 7,000 guys who lie here in the Philippines and in my graves. Leon Cooper spends as much time as he can these days pleading for help to clean up a South Pacific beach he considers sacred ground. Nearly 3,400 Americans were killed or wounded on Tarawa's Red Beach. 64 years ago, Cooper commanded one of the wooden boats that brought the Marines into the beach at Tarawa. What's the most vivid memory of the invasion? Uh, watching uh, guys being cut to pieces by Japanese gunfire. I can't believe I was here 65 years ago. 65 years ago. How many times have you been to Fiji? <clears throat> uh, this is my second trip. Second trip? The first time my wife and I came here about 18, 20 years ago, uh, she had booked uh, travel for us uh, on something called the Tours of Valor without consulting me because she knew that uh, this is what her dumb husband urgently needed by way of therapy to revisit places where he had been as a young man. And uh, that was uh, how uh, he got the idea of writing his first book, The 90 Day Wonder, Darkness Remembered, because he was able for the first time in years to remember things that had happened many years before. And while writing, uh, the, the, uh, the recollections of that experience, he became to be, feel almost like a human being. He hasn't yet succeeded, but he's still trying. World War II veteran from Malibu. Leon Cooper. Leon Cooper. Leon Cooper. Leon Cooper. The star was awarded for his courageous work. I believe I owe it to these guys, the guys who died. This is Mr. Cooper's story. This is, I mean, Leon Cooper's not the only World War II veteran, but he's the last World War II veteran in the battle. And I, my life is better for it. Up to 40,000 MIAs are still lying in unmarked graves where they fell. And I want to see uh, a major effort done by our government to recover the bodies of all these guys who died in defense of our country. Leon Cooper, what a hero. 
he is, Greg. Yeah, he surely is.